Family, let's just pray together. Father God, we thank you for another amazing opportunity that we have to just dig into your word, Lord, and to just grow in the knowledge of who you are and how much you love us. Holy Spirit, I welcome you here today. I ask that you will speak through my mind. Use me, Lord, for your glory today. And I ask that you will touch every heart that listens to this message and that receives this message, Lord. That nobody will um, be the same after they heard this message, Lord. But receive it, accept it with meekness and be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. Family, today I'm going to speak about learn to walk. That's the title of my message. Now the Bible teaches us that God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we can relate to Him as Father and as Son. We are familiar with those terms. It's quite easy to us. But as Holy Spirit, it is not that easy. And today I want to help you to have a better understanding of Him, the Holy Spirit. Yes, I say Him because He is a person. He is not an it. <laughs> He's not a good feeling. He's not an atmosphere, a power or a tingling experience that we feel whenever our favorite song is sung and our emotions are stirred and we have goosebumps. He can and should be experienced by all Christians as a real person, as a close friend. We can and should all know him personally for ourselves. Let's read from Acts 2 verse uh, sorry, Acts 3, verse 2 to 3. Now a man who was lame from birth was being carried to the temple gate called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. Now many Christians can relate to this man. Not that they are born physically lame, but this man's physical condition may be a picture of their spiritual life. He was born lame from his mother's womb and he was carried to the temple and laid there to beg for money. But one day Peter and John met him and instead of giving him money they gave him something far more valuable that changed his life forever. The Bible doesn't say that he was born without legs. I'm sure you will agree with me. No, this lame man had legs at birth, but those legs did not work. Although he had legs, he couldn't walk. He was born with legs, but he lived his life not using them. He crawled or he pulled himself if there wasn't somebody that could help him or carry him. And then if there was somebody, they carried him. His problem wasn't that he didn't have legs. His legs just didn't support him. We have legs, family. Not just to have them on our bodies, but so that they can carry us wherever we need to go. His legs didn't do that for him. It didn't carry him. Instead, he carried his legs. They malfunctioned. <laughs> they were not doing what they were supposed to do. You know, since the fall of Adam, everyone at their natural birth gets a gift from the devil. And that is a sinful nature. But because of Jesus Christ's death on the cross, our Heavenly Father gives us a precious gift upon our new birth, the Holy Spirit. Let's read Ephesians 1 verse 13 to 14. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is given to us at the moment we believe, that is what the scripture says, and receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior. And we are born again. We get the new nature of Jesus Christ. 
So Holy Spirit is not a reward for reaching a certain level of Christianity or spiritual maturity. If you are a believer, you have received the Holy Spirit as a gift. He is yours. And he lives in you from the moment that you are born again. Just as the lame man had legs at birth, so is it with us. We receive the Holy Spirit at our spiritual birth. None of us walked out of our mother's womb. <laughs> Amen. We had to learn how to use our legs and to walk. And we didn't all walk at exactly the same time. Some took maybe a bit longer than others. But legs came with birth. We receive legs normally with birth. But walking is a practice, something that we have to learn to do. So legs are a gift that we receive. But walking is an action we have to take. Our birth is normally a, a relatively a quick experience, a quick event. But learning to walk takes time. The story of the lame man that had legs but could not use them and had to pull himself along or depend on others to carry him instead of walking might be similar to your relationship with the Holy Spirit. You might be born again and have the Holy Spirit in your heart. There's no question about that. But you don't know him as your personal friend. You don't have a relationship with him. You do not walk with him and you do not talk with him. Your spiritual life is more like crawling in the flesh than boldly walking in the spirit. If that is your experience, you are living the life of a crippled Christian. I'm not judging you. Or want to make you feel like a failure. I want to help you to experience the fullness of what God made available to you. In Galatians 5 verse 16, Paul urges believers who already have the Holy Spirit to walk in the Spirit. Let's read that. But I say, walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. That is so beautiful to me. So it is we, if, if you use your legs, if you walk, you don't think about, I must put one foot in front of the other and move one leg now. No, you habitually walk. If you want to get from one place to the another, next, you habitually walk. You don't even think about it. And that is how we should walk and live habitually in the Holy Spirit. Let's read further. Responsive to and controlled and guided by the Holy Spirit. Paul says, then you will certainly not gratify the cravings and desires of the flesh, of human nature without God. All Christians have the Holy Spirit, but not all Christians walk in the Holy Spirit. So many are like the lame man. They have legs, but they don't walk. Legs are present, but they don't carry them. Legs are present, but they are brought to the temple by others. Legs are present, but they sit at the gate instead of entering. They beg for things that are less important. Legs are present, but they lie as if lame on the ground. We have the Holy Spirit, but we do not always live a life that is surrendered to Him. It's normal for us to live a carnal life according to the flesh. We complain and we are unhappy with our lives. We question our destiny. We carry the weight of our lives all by ourselves. Our marriages, our finances, our children, all the challenges that come across our path. Even though we have the Spirit of Almighty God living in us, we carry the weight of that all by ourselves. We have the Holy Spirit abiding in us. And His desire is to be our closest friend. But instead, we seek and rely on other things, other people, even other spirits for solutions. You know, it's like a chicken. You know that a chicken 
pack for things when when they look for things to eat on the ground. They pack, 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 pack. They don't look up. They look at the ground all around them to find something that they would like to eat on the ground. We are like that if we are like this lame man spiritually. Instead of soaring like eagles in the sky. That is where God wants us to operate from. Not from here underneath on the ground, focused on the ground, on the less important things. But flying, soaring like eagles, focusing on Him, on the Holy Spirit in us. Hearing His voice, being responsive to His voice and obeying Him and loving Him, having a relationship with Him. And growing from that relationship into obedience. Our Father God loves us so much. He gave us His very own Holy Spirit to always be with us as a love gift. But it is up to us to open that gift and to experience that gift in our lives that is available to us. 2 Peter 1 verse 3 says, Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has already been deposited in us by His divine power. Isn't that amazing? Everything. It doesn't say only certain things. Everything we could ever need for life and godliness has been given to us, family. Wow, God is so amazing. And our Heavenly Father is not a liar. We can take Him on His word. So many Christians remain at the gateway of a beautiful breakthrough, but fail to enter through it. Their prayer life is nothing more than chasing after things that God has promised them, but they don't see results. They satisfy to lie and wait on other people, on material things, on other human spirits for help, instead of walking with God's Holy Spirit and standing on the Word of God. There's no lasting fruit in their lives because of all the busyness, all the distractions, all the pecking that keep them busy for life. That is the description of the life of a lame Christian. Only able to operate in the flesh, although the Holy Spirit is available. All their achievements are the results of their own efforts. God calls this dead works. A lame believer does not deny the existence of Holy Spirit, but he lives his life without relying, without a relationship with the Holy Spirit. He is there, Holy Spirit is there, like legs, but not working. Not involved in your life, like lame legs. Instead of Him carrying us, we carry Him. And He experiences nothing, not only the Christian life as boring, but life in general as very difficult. And this is not what God intended for us to carry the weight of life and its responsibilities all alone. No, he intended, he has, he has so much more for us. He wants us to enjoy life, to have life in abundance. That is what he came for. If your life doesn't look like life in abundance, then it's time to go and have a look at what does your relationship with Holy Spirit look like? Do you have a relationship with Holy Spirit or not? Or is that something that you have to get in order? How, um, let's read from John 14, verse 16 to 18. And I will ask the Father, this is Jesus talking. He says, I will ask the Father and he will give you another Savior, the Holy Spirit of truth, who will be to you a friend just like me. And he will never leave you. The world won't receive him because they can't see him or know him. But you know him intimately because he remains with you and will live inside you. Wow, this is amazing. 
So Holy Spirit dwells in us to help us stay in touch with God through our prayer life and reading the Bible. He wants to help us to carry the weight of the load of this life. If we don't walk in the Spirit, then it means we walk in the flesh. And we toil in the flesh, we run and we grow tired and weary. Our run becomes a slow drag until we nearly get to a standstill. We worn out. You know, Isaiah 40, 31 says, Those that wait upon the Lord, that means spending time in His presence, spending time with Holy Spirit, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They will walk and they will not faint. They will run and they will not get weary. That's the promise in the Word of God. That is what God wants for us. And if we don't, if we live a life in the flesh as Christians, we become bitter, we are stressed out, we are worn out. If we don't learn to live and walk habitually in the Holy Spirit, life will be a difficult yoke and the Christian life a heavy burden. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 31 says, Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's a promise from Jesus. He said this. I want to quickly share a testimony with you. God is so good. He gave me a testimony to share with you just this past week. You know, one morning when I was um, spending time with God in the Word and just praying and worshiping the Lord and reading the Word, um, I felt Holy Spirit said to me, don't go to the next portion of Scripture that you wanted to go and read today. Go back to what you read yesterday. I want you to go and look at that a little bit more. So what I love doing is I love to dissect scripture. I love to look at different translations and, you know, go to the dictionary with specific words and even get more better understanding of this word um, so that I can understand the scripture better. So I went to do that as I go, went back to that scripture. I went to other scripture, you know, read a bit before it and after that section in the Bible also. And um, during the day, uh, something happened that wanted to bring fear and anxiety and stress into my life. Wanted to cause me to be anxious. And shortly after this happened, Holy Spirit reminded me, do you remember the scripture that you studied this morning that I asked you to go back to, that you read the previous day? And I was reminded of that scripture. And that scripture is Hebrews 13 verse 5 and 6. But it basically says this, I will never leave you alone, never and I will not loosen my grip on your life. I will never forsake you. Wow. And there's many other words, different translations that uses other words. But that, that's basically what it says. And what a powerful confirmation of God's love for me. And that doesn't matter what happened during the day. What wants what's coming my way and want to cause fear and stress and anxiety. God has got me and he's not going to let go of me. That helped me so much. Immediately, the stress factor was removed from that situation. Fear was removed. And you know, um, that evening before me and Pastor Warren prayed together, I shared with him, what I experienced and the scripture that God gave me that helped me. And he was in a similar situation. It was something that we experienced together. And he said to me, you know what? The previous evening, God gave him that same scripture. That is how faithful our God is and how much he loves us. But family, if we don't spend time with him, 
if I didn't make time that morning, if I had an excuse and I didn't get to my room with him and, and made time to spend with him, I would have missed it. I wouldn't have been ready for this anxiety that came my way, this fear that came my way. And it would probably have overtaken me and it would have ta taken me much longer to process this thing and to get uh, um, to deal with it. So the importance is to spend time, make time with God, read His Word, fill your heart with His Word. His Word is the truth. His Word is for you. This scripture might be for you also today. Maybe you just needed to hear that. That is how God works. And He used people also. He used many ways to speak to us. Why don't we grab onto His easy yoke and his light burden. Why do we struggle on our own? The layman in the Bible was sitting and begging instead of leaping and rejoicing. I could have sat to that day anxious, depressed, negative, full of fear. But because of the word that God gave me, I was leaping and rejoicing. He asked for alms, but what he really needed was healing. So Peter and John did not give him money to help him. Instead, Peter took the man's hand and lifted him up. And through the power of God, the man started to walk, jumping and praising God. Isn't that much better than money? You may ask, how did the power of God operate through them? They walked with Jesus for three years. They knew Jesus. They had an intimate relationship with Jesus. And now they knew the Holy Spirit in the same way. So actually nothing changed for them. They kept on living the same life that they lived during the three years that they walked with Jesus. Now they only experienced more of the miracles through their own lives. We must desire to know Holy Spirit personally, as our closest friend. He wants to be that for us. We already have all His fullness in us. We can't get more, but we can and must make an effort to know Him personally, more and more on a daily basis, by spending time reading the Word. You know, it takes the effort. Any relationship takes effort. When we just meet someone, when me and Pastor Warren just met, we didn't know each other. We didn't walk close to each other, um, knowing what you think and what I think. Today it is like that, but it wasn't like that. We had to make time to spend time with each other. We had to talk to each other. We had to listen to each other. We needed to be involved in each other's lives, loving on each other. That is how we grow a relationship, and it's the same with Holy Spirit. Acknowledging His presence with you by talking to Him and loving Him, living in harmony with Him, walking with Him, noticing Him, honoring him, listening to his quiet, still, small voice speaking in our spirits, glorifying with him with our lives, is what we, how we grow our relationship with him. He talks mainly to us through his word. That's why it's so important, because other people can also speak into our lives, or a thought might, might come into our mind, or just something we experience and we sense it might be the Holy Spirit. But if we don't know the Word of God, we might confuse that voice with our own voice or the devil's voice or somebody else's voice. We need to know the Word so that we know it's easy to identify when it's the voice of Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. He's not going to intrude and shout above the noise of our busy lives. He will meet with you when you make time to meet with Him. When we seek Him and listen to His still, small voice. Can you hear? He doesn't have a loud voice shouting. And that's why we might miss Him many times. Because we're not attentive to that still, small voice. He talks to us, but we might miss it. 
So I want to encourage you, motivate you. Turn your prayer from God, I need money. I need a job. I need a car. I need this contract. I need your gifts. I need your fruit to Holy Spirit. I want to know you more. John 15 verse 4 to 8 says, Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. The kind of prayer we pray, family, reveals a lot about our understanding of God and ourselves. We like that part that says, um, ask what you wish and it will be done for you. <laughs> but we don't like the part that just comes before that. Remain in me and my words remain in you. Then ask what you wish and it will be done for you. It's about relationship, first of all. We must change our request and ask for what matters most. Holy Spirit is ready to be our helper, to be our intercessor, our comforter, our counselor, our wisdom, our advocate, our standby, our teacher, strength, the spirit of truth, and so much more, everything that we need in this life. Asking for alms is just a temporary solution to a crippled life. The lame man needed to get the miracle of walking, not money. We have the miracle of the gift of the Holy Spirit. We start by crawling and stumbling, but we must keep on practicing until we walk with Him as our personal best friend. Maybe you're sitting at the temple gate right now, desperate for alms. I want to say like Peter and John, silver and gold, I'm not giving you today. But I shared something much more valuable with you. If you did receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have the Holy Spirit. Switch your focus from the things of God. To the presence of Holy Spirit. He is already in you. Learn to walk in close harmony with Him and keep your focus on Him alone. You have legs. Learn to walk. Walk with Him and it will change your life forever. This is the year of turnaround. If you want to see God promise turnaround, that's why He gave Pastor Warren that for this year, that vision. So it's a promise from God. But we won't see it if we do not do, apply what we learn into our lives. So I want to encourage you, learn to walk with Holy Spirit. I just want to pray with you. Father, we thank you for the gift of Holy Spirit that you have given to us. What a precious gift. I want to ask for every person that listened to this word, to this message, that they will have the desire to get to know you, Holy Spirit, to grow their relationship with you. I know you are ready to do, to grow it. But I want to ask that you will give everyone that listens the desire to also grow, to get to know you personally for themselves, to become, so that you can become their closest, their best friend, because that is what you want. Thank you for that. Thank you, you that you want to do that for us in Jesus' name. I want to pray with you today. If you have never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then I want to give you the opportunity. This is your day to do that. Pray with me. Say this after me. Thank you, Father God, for this word that I could hear today. I am a sinner. 
Jesus, I need you in my life. Today, I invite you into my life. Please become the Lord and the Savior of my life. I give my life to you. Thank you that you died on the cross for me. I confess today that Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. Amen. So if you receive Jesus, if you pray that prayer, you receive Jesus, you also receive the gift of Holy Spirit. Now just take the next step and start growing in your relationship with the Holy Spirit. I want to end off by just speaking, declaring this word over you. 2 Corinthians 13 verse 14. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.